folks, welcome back to another episode of Our Journeys, and we have happily, finally, after four tries, drawn into a game that is not on its final turn. And we are finding that here with Evening Wolf Friends, uh, running a battle mage, a dragon battle mage, it would seem, with shouts and all, against Apophis, or Apophis, we must the founder, running the poop stone, and what looks to be kind of your... Standard concoction of uh, Telvani. We see a slight marsh blade there in their hands. Probably a conscription lurking about. May have even seen one. We are on turn 11. We are in the late game here. But it's brought to my attention. I believe it was uh, Brave Carryout who mentioned, you know, that there's actually something to be said for coming in late in the game when kind of things have already gotten juicy. We've kind of gotten past the whole, you know, I, I personally, I like to see how games develop, but at some point, You've seen enough of them, and you're like, okay, it's, it's cool to be able to see kind of just enter into the late game, especially here, all tied up on life. You cannot and obviously, I would say Apophis has a, a advantage. Unrelenting Force is actually a horrible card right now, just because if he, any, any, if he ejects an entire lane, they're all going to come back and all get new keywords. So, as we will see demonstrated here... They all go back. I mean, which is which is nice. Now it does it does burn a card. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't didn't mean to indicate that it was absolutely worthless, but okay, I was actually just totally wrong there. I mean, it is I, I, it is a bummer. They are going to come down with all kinds of woo wee. Look at that. Lots and lots of guys led into battle. So Apophis lost a oof. And there's an answer. Not enough. The Rana, Mulamir, and the Dargan all have no chance of surviving. So a... Oh, we see a Parthenax come down here. So I guess, I guess the good news, what I didn't account for was how fast Evening Wolf could and did close it out there. Nicely done. We have managed to find Beast of Burden 86 up against Sly Boog, who, for those of you who don't know, does have a YouTube channel. I believe uh, he runs a lot of control decks. Uh, uh, Empire, I remember seeing, and Telvani, I think, is his bread and butter. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, he's a YouTuber, but I, I believe he goes by the moniker Sly Boogie, B-O-G-I-E, so you can feel free to look him up. Uh, you should be able to get a nice plethora of good control games on his channel. Right now, he is a little bit on the back foot, I would say, up against Beast of Burden's uh, Battle Mage with Cadwell. Good old Cadwell the Betrayer. He's making some good headway, but he is running low on cards. Clear out! And it will be interesting to see what Beast of Burden does. I guess he's just going to hit face, really. Choosing his next play wisely is Beast of Burden. We see he is uh, ranked 222, and Sly Book is uh, 202. So pretty close, pretty close. It's nice to see that kind of parity. Obviously, you know you got the numbers don't necessarily mean oh they're on exactly the same level, but you know it's not better than seeing you know top 10 versus rank five. You know I don't know if that matchup's ever happened, but Beast of Burden decides he's going to go for it. Does not draw a prophecy here. At this point, he's looking to lose. Yeah, ward up that crocodile. Okay, different crocodile than I was expecting. I thought he'd force a trade of both of those uh, in, in the field lane, both the kitty and the Rimmon Purveyor. Rimmon. Yep, yeah, Rimmon Purveyor. Hot dog. Look at me go. And Fuego! That Earthbone Spinner, I'm guessing, is going to come in pretty handy either against a Drain or Guard. But in these colors in Dominion, Slybu could play plenty of both. And yeah, it looks like he, he may be able to drain his way right out of peril. 
so much for the sweet of skin. Now does not get the pilfer, so won't get the little bit of extra magic that the kitty could have given, but does keep his this purveyor alive. Blows. And it'll be interesting to see, is he does he hit face and, get, and give him a card? Ah. Trying to hoping hoping to be able to close this down. Okay, that word I get well, eh. You say it was it was wise, but That's not uh, bewildering speed. I wasn't bewildered. I don't know about you all. I call it eh, moderately swift. You know, eh, not not terribly slow speed. Okay, so Slidebook is just is looking to just build that board without giving Beast of Burden any more tools to work with. And only six magic employ. I don't know why, but I just feel like this game we're further into this game than just turn six. But that's the thing, even even with a handful of cards, Beast can only play one or two, more than likely. Probably not going to see the crushing blow here. Uh, well, you might. You might see it against the kitty, because that's she, she accounts for two drain. That's a two-point swing, so right there off the jump. But then also the extra magicka. It might be worth a crushing blow, but by gum, you hate to see that. And as a, as a double whammy, it means Cadwell could not come down. So he can only play one of the three cards in his hand. Which will it be? Really does not. I mean, that's just, that's it's a really crummy turn. If he had seven magic, a, you know, a crushing blow on Cadwell would be not too bad. But um, keep your distance. All right. So he chooses. He's he's playing, hoping, hoping, or counting on the fact that. Oh no! Uh. Really? That's a surprise. That is a surprise. I thought he would have hit the 2-1. I'm not sure what... Maybe it just made for... Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. Ah. So much that is, that's alright. That is alright. Hey! Close off my goods! As I've had, as, as have many times before, folks can correct me or say, oh, I think he was going for this, or it's obvious he was doing this, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, totally. All right, Sly does choose to break those runes. I thought he might be waiting until he could assemble a board for essentially a one-turn uh, push. But I think now that he's he's getting a little more we magic, I think he's just really realizing that. Ooh. Just tell me who to stab. Okay, not a bad pull there. Does get the extra magic? Does he have a card to play with it? If he doesn't, this game is. My paws are quicker than. Ah, uh, looks like barring a prophecy. I don't even know if a prophecy would help. I mean, I guess it would, yeah. If you can remove. Ready to join the circle. Okay, hedging his bets there. <coughs> Won't need it. Crushing blow. Well done, Beast of Burden. Good game to both. Oh, no. Tribunal. They always have so much removal, don't they? Okay, I better get rid of his mage. I want to keep Yoren. He might be useful late game. Might have time to play him. Oh. Naughty Necromancer. Bright moves. Way like too early. Hail, friend. Thank you, Barrow Stalker. I'm really pleased to see you. Oh, and if I, I can... smell the stench of the living. Speak, citizen. Okay. I'm gonna bluff that I'm, I'm gonna try to drag his hell. Wrong place for a midnight stroll. I should have a nice spike for that next round. Eat I'm just gonna have to hope that they don't have a pierce in Twilight. I 
I can't do the viper noises very well. Oh, bless your soul. Hmm, okay. Bit of a waste. Okay. For you. Let's see who we can rally then. For a practical demonstration. Done. Nice big buff giant. Necro would have been good too as well. Your peace, dog. They clearly didn't like him, did they? I've got nastier targets for javelin than that, though. Ooh. Moroki, or Mordecai, whichever way you say it. Wow, he's really stunning, isn't he? Beautiful. Watch yourself now. Such a pity I've got to kill him. Can't have him staying there like that. Too late right for you. By the power of the hiss. Rise, my servant. Yay. Thank you, Snake. Hmm. What were they going to do next, then, eh? Okay. Quite good for me actually. That's still five damage on board. And that means they can't now mummify Yoran or the giants, can they? Your head. Oh it's Tassie! Oh, my power. Thank you, Dom. <laughs> Got lovely red eyes, isn't he? He's a very pretty um, ward crafter. Hmm. Is it going to be Yoran next round or am I going to go for a giant maybe? If they damage him I can always unsummon him. Okay, they're taking a while. I suppose they've got quite a lot of cards to look at. Rise, my servant. They're looking to kill him next round. Now, I'll get them to be really nice about now. Come on, Galen. Nice cream tea waiting for you, your favourite. I will have to oh. hit. Uh. Now, oh, behold my. Power. He heard me. Now that's a lovely guard. Beautiful. Like the effect on that. Let's give them something to worry about. Oh. Thank you, honey. I will keep Sotha Sil's people alive. Looking good. They can't Dawn's Wrath while their guard's there as well. What are they plotting, I wonder? A few drinks, a few laughs, okay, and a Okay, there goes Storm's Wrath on What could be better? I guess I was right, wasn't I? They weren't going to Dawn's Wrath while their guard was there. The Earthborn. Earthbone, rather.
Yeah. Keep your distance. Behold my power. Premium mummy. It is too late for peace. We fight for the freedom well. of us all. Keep the pressure up. Looking good, though. To kill you. It's kind of funny because that's what I'm going to be doing next round. You're so sweet. I could just eat you up. <laughs> I do love Gormand. This one thanks you. Alrighty, and here we find Brother Ridge mixing it up with Lucifer 770. I guess that's a floor above 666. I don't know. Anywho, uh, running the Telvani with the cat's paw and all the whatnot, loose for looking to make that push to rank four, as a lot of folks can relate to. Brother Ridge doing fantastic. This was the first season he was able to start off at rank four, at rank five instead of down at rank nine, and he's already climbed his way through rank four and is making his way up the tower. So hopefully he's getting close to that gateway game. Who knows? Maybe this is his gateway game, and we could see him break into rank two. Heck, man, he is on easily on pace for a legendary appearance. And that would be incredibly exciting. Definitely looking really good against Lucifer, especially with that withered hand. Well, okay, he can't play it this turn. I was going to say, with, with uh, Chewbacca in his hand, he's going to be prime uh, for, for the strike against Lucifer if Lucifer does not have an Ice Storm this turn which I'm guessing he does not. Either he's savoring the, the sweet feel of that diabolical ice storm, or he is at a loss. And really at that much, well, I guess it could be Fingers of the Mountain as well. That would be actually a very easy math there. One, two, and three. Doesn't look like he has either of those. Though. This is really his only chance, oh, excuse me, to I didn't come here alone. Okay, all right. So Brother Ridge with some good options there, but I'm guessing Lucifer is going to kill off the Rift Thane. Yep. Uh, luckily, Brother Ridge has the Triumphant Jarl, although he may be dropping Withered Hand. In order to forestall Fingers of the Mountain or anything else. Yeah, that's a huge one right there. Backbreaker. And taking the advantage of the the fact that the Fifth Legion Trainer can train those makeshift defenses and give them that power of one. And it also doesn't hurt. I mean, he, he's got Triumphant Jarl, so he can doesn't have to be quite as um, reserved. What have we here? The hist provides. All right, Lucifer able to find another guard. Has only lost one health since the last turn. Chewbacca gets the hit on the guard. Going to get him down to seven life before Triumphant comes down. Oh, you remember, folks, play that draw first. Now, he knows the deck better than I do, but... And, nope, and not Ambitious Hireling. I'm thinking of... There's a guy who gives everybody a lane buff. That that's the thing you get. I mean, like I said, Brother Ridge, I'm sure knows his deck better than I do. But uh, you know, if you have any kind of reach in the deck, whether it's a lane buff, board buff, uh, Dawnbreaker, whatever, always a good idea. Particularly if you can, if you know you would be able to afford to play them if you have them, to to draw first, because you never know. You could you could buff your board up to. And be able to close that all the but like I said, that's, that's just a PSA because I forget to do it all the time. 
game. And I've done it a few times where I've gone, oh my gosh, I had lethal. I if I just if I just uh, drew first, I would have had my my sword or my axe or my whatever in hand. So Lucifer may be looking, going, all right, this is GG. May I, I mean, he's got eight magicka. That's that's plenty to work with. That is an ice storm, which would just about clear the board. That cruel fire blooms. I mean, two costs for five damage, not horrible, but it looks like he's going to leave Brother Ridge with just enough. Ambitious Hireling, what does he do again? Uh, okay, I mean, he, so he's a 1-1, one, one, essentially, at this point. Not needed. Brother Ridge, going to close this battle. out. Gets a congratulations from Lucifer. Very cordial. And Brother Ridge will take the win. We are going to be in for a treat, I think, folks. We've got Vincenzo NPO well met, against Reiki Simo. Reiki Simo. Reiki Simo. I don't know. But they're both ranked two, the hanging out in the Atronach. Vincenzo is running. Uh, uh, Guild Sworn. There's yeah, plan. that sounds There's about right. Always a plan. And this is the first game I've been able to get in at the very I beginning of. The uh, despite there being 19 people online, only about six of them are playing. And every single one that I go into, yeah. the game is on the last turn or it is already decided. So it's it's been a bit of a bit of an evening here, but we're going to piece together I will not waste enough words for a happy. compilation here. Especially I will be featuring a couple of uh, Brave Carry Odds games from uh, a few days ago. It was very great to hear. I got some feedback that it's good to have another voice, a little bit somebody, you know, different. And uh, they definitely enjoyed Brave, so uh, Brave's commentary and gameplay and in particular approach to it. As did I. So, always oh, nice to hear. Maybe it's Ricky. Ricky Simo? Ricky Simo. Call him Rick. Just call him Ricky. Well, Ricky, yeah. Ricky for now. I'm not sure if that's right or not. But we do see Vincenzo with an Ice Storm in hand. That's usually a, a very clear indicator that he is running at the very least a mid-range, if not a control deck. We've also seen a, a nice bit of prophecies there with the Ambusher. Is it? Yeah, Green Pack the Ambusher. And of course the Oreo Cookie. Mighty Conjuring. There's a not There's really doing a whole player. heck of a lot of this particular moment, I'm sure he's got plenty of Speak, five citizen. power creatures in his deck, just we don't see any of them at the moment. And, I mean, almost exactly even, almost dead even on board, in hand, and in health. I mean, just just a little bit off. And Vincenzo getting the, getting the Schwar draw of two piercing javelins. At least he has a target for one of them, and one of them's not an Iron Atronach. Ah, that's neither here. Vincenzo making the trades. Okay, keeping the Oreo cookie alive. Which is interesting because had he made that trade, Ricky would not be getting a card right now. What have we here? So things have flipped a little bit, and now Ricky has fall. card advantage and board advantage. Oh, and another prophecy for Vincenzo. Yeah, you really want to see that on. You don't want to see that uh, in hand. You want to. You want that to be. Oh, Thieves Guild. You will die. Seen a lot more of that alt art lately, and Ricky showing that he is in fact also running hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> Vincenzo. Okay, this is perhaps an even more control leaning. And we'll never give ground. Yeah, already the altar is getting that value, getting that, bringing bringing in the the card draw, and, and just that quickly. We know. It's got card advantage. Try something. Oh, razzle dazzle dazzle. And hey, prophecy triggers when it's Speak, supposed to. It citizen. does not go directly into Vincenzo's hand, so he more than likely. He is going to be able to take down Razzmodazzmodazzm. Which is huge, because... No! 
No, no, no. All right. Well, he's going to get Javelin then. There's no way that's going to be allowed to continue. And we will see a Mighty Conjuring. Interesting. Wait, and he leaves. He leaves Razzle. No, he doesn't. Okay, I, I thought he was going to trade and use Mighty Conjuring. But I was mistaken. An unfortunate mistake. Perhaps he saw that as well. All right. She gets drained, but she also gets guard and an unhappy trade with the 5-6. Much better trade with the Oreo cookie, but we may see Mighty Conjuring. Never mind. And unfortunately, the chance to deploy Mighty Conjuring effectively has slipped through Vincenzo's grasp. He will be able to put, you know, finish off a nasty. And is really chiseling away at Ricky's health. Guessing Oreo Cookie's older sister. Yep, coming down there. Advising Ricky to prepare. Wow! Probably the closest thing you could get to a mirror match at this point uh, without them both being the exact same attributes. We're seeing cards that are well established in the meadow. Uh, meta, yeah. yeah! And Vincenzo seeing the, the unfortunate... Uh, I don't know if you call it a misplay, um, but then again, you might. Speak, Ooh, citizen. I thought he was going to hit Ice Storm there to get at least six points of drain off the board. None can challenge, Kajit. And this game might be over with Ricky having card advantage now with that altar in play. Welcome to the shadows. I mean, he's just got the, all the draw engines. It's good to see Disciple. Yeah. Back in the back in the game, you know, she got that nerf where she only spits, puts the cards in hand after at the end of your turn, which I think is fine. But it, it made her no longer the peak efficiency for the main deck that was using her, which was uh, Doom Crag Warrior, I believe. Uh, Vincenzo now in a, in a bit of a tough spot. There we go. He does get the Mighty Conjuring down. Hopefully, Ricky does not have. A well, removal. I, I was thinking specifically of There's Mummify, no but any There's type no of removal really life. sucks. It is the perfect answer to that 7 7 kitty. It's got the body, it's got the ward, it will not allow that drain. Although we have seen Ricky is now back up to 19, he's clawing his way back. He is going to be able to uh, get, get the extra magic of this turn with the pilfer from the distiller. So he's going to have a ton of magic to work with. 15. Holy cow. And what he can do with that. Pretty much play out his entire hand and every hand that would ever come out there. Kidding, of course. Solterre bringing back. Doesn't have a snake. Razzle-medazzle-medazzle. There's the edicts, the removal that was needed. And that may be... That may bring about the concession from Vincenzo. Now everything is flipped. Ricky is the one with uh, the board and the health and the card. This one is far too advantage. For his opponents. And uh, this is where I personally say, Uncle. But Vincenzo may have other ideas. He can get rid of a decent chunk of the board with Javelin and Ice Storm, but it will leave that distiller. Which, with the amount of cards Ricky has in hand, that's pretty much going to result in a, a blood. Try something. You Razzle Bedazzle making ready. his return. My paws are Interesting that Ricky hit first, or put Razzle down first and then hit, because if Vincenzo did hit a prophecy like a javelin, it would have made Razzle the target. Yeah. And Vincenzo calls it. And Vincenzo has changed it up. He has discarded the Guild Sworn and is now running with Ebonheart Pact. Ah, he did He did run uh, the Douche and he ran Belly G. Uh, he ran Belly G in that last game that we saw. Was not able to draw either one of them to get rid of that altar. So it looks like what we are seeing here is... 
Uh, probably in the same vein, certainly not the same composition, I would guess, but similar to what we've seen uh, Frequency Rising running as of late. It's the it's the late game, late game Eben Lethal things. Ends up against Big Clothier, which is one of the more... The heft heals and rejuvenates. Just sounds like bad grammar, but I'm sure there's some interesting backstory to that. Will it be as interesting as the plethora of removal? Well, that remains to be seen. But it's not playing into Big Clothier's favor. I think, I think Eben is favored when you get to the late game. If he can, if Vincenzo can ramp and do all the things, the good I things that Eben tries to, to do, I think he's going to be able to uh, prevail over Big Clothier. Tree Minder, more. More drain. Clothier are not in a big hurry, it would seem, which is understandable. He's also running what clearly is a control deck, but... Ooh. Is he going to Skaven? To make the trade absolute? He'll yeah, poke him with a crossbow, though. Alright, so... Dawn's Wrath not online yet. Oh, Thorn his mage goes down to a humble negation. What have we here? All right. They will perish in flame. Is he going to use an archer's gambit just for that? I say just for that. That does assign a value to it, and he does use it for that. May the ancestors bless us. It's always a hard call because you want to play the board that you're faced with. At the same time, you know, it's especially if you're playing a control player that you know is going to have some big cards to lay down in the future. You know, you're kind of... You kind of want to hold on to certain ones. Or you may want to hold on to certain ones in order to be able to take out a big threat later on. I'm not sure if big... It doesn't look like big is running any kind of exalt. Fortunately, Vincenzo with just a... Now that... Uh, yeah, we may see that and Squish and Yoink Aaron. That was a great value for that. Get Squish right back. And right now, that Dark Guardian is not going to be able to finish off Night Talon. He's going to have to kill himself. Oh no, well, of course, he's got the Lightning Bolt. Duh. Or Channeled Storm. Either way. We might see a Lightning Bolt here as well. Or Javelin. Wow, so Big Cloth here just... Uh, I mean, obviously, he has to have more in his deck than removal, but he's just drawn into all of it, and he's burned through a lot of it. What do we have? Uh, Negation, two Channeled Storms, Edict, and Piercing Javelin. And we know he's got a Lightning Bolt in his hand that he's already played, so that'll come back as well. Or that has come back. So essentially, two Lightning Bolts. But Vincenzo really can't capitalize. It's kind of nice. Oh, okay, he's not willing to break that rune. He knows. All right, I need to. Yeah, I think he's just looking. He's going to be waiting to get a, an OTK with Unstoppable Rage. I'm guessing he runs like a Belly G or something. And he is. Not sure. Okay, really not wanting that. Which I can kind of understand. I, I, I know. Lethal on board is, is dangerous. And that's the reason why. Unfortunate it wasn't Venom Tongue, though, that would allow Vincenzo to ramp, but he doesn't need it. Right now, he can play from hand Unstoppable Rage on Belly G. So big cloth here, and that's where this deck really, really shines in that late game, is the, the I, would, I don't want to say easy potential for an OTK, but... It kind of is, and so Big Cloth, Big Cloth here, if he's running, um, what's that one? Uh, conscription. Not typical, I don't think, in Telvanni, or uh, in Tribunal. 
But if he is, it is not the right card to have here. I mean, right now it's not a problem. Because he has nothing really to rage with or rage on. And Big Cloth here doesn't have the Grumite that can banish a an action. So that, that at least is safe from... Any effects Cloth here could have. Oh, I'll get this yet. So yeah, Vincenzo are just waiting, especially I now. Now that Big is, is starting to amass something of a lane. Ooh, Aelid Guardians. That oof, always Always a quite a problem. Vincenzo does not have to worry about Cloth here running the but Admiral Tharn is able to replicate the process, and boy, oh boy, is Lezra giving a heck of value there. So, yeah, it's probably the first time that I'm, I'm, I saw an Aelius Guardian come down in the very next turn. I'll get this yet. I wouldn't say punished, but the things took a, a quite a swing. All right, so Cicero, Unstoppable Rage, almost a certainty, I would imagine. And that is why. Oh, and fresh start as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, Unstoppable Rage. All oh, the cards. Oh, my goodness gracious. Look at that. A full hand. We might see it concede from Big Cloth here. Yeah, that's really hard to compete against. We do see the douche. We still don't see an, a ripe rage target yet, a la one that can finish a game out that close. And unfortunately, a Big Cloth here just doesn't have enough. It does have the answer for lethal, though. Poor. Poor. Um. Okay, okay, just just as good, if not better. The glory of the Orsimer. You know what's more Orsimer than that? Nothing, because you're the Orsimus, Gortwog. Except for your name. Gortwog sounds a little clunky. But yeah, what's his name? Cicero. I kept saying Lucian. Cicero. Think, thinking Lucian. Cicero's... I mean, and that's just a lane of nothing for the old Black Dragon. being impervious to lethal as she is. Ooh! Gorwog will stick, though. This is in your head! Hard. Okay, just kidding. All right, so he eliminates the Threv, but Clothia really on his last legs there. All the draw in the world. Probably the Thieves' Guild. I mean, Vincenzo is not... Just kidding. You say he's really not wanting for magic at this point. I don't, I don't think there's any... Any combo that he could want to run, that he won't be able to run from hand at this point. An unfortunate mistake. Ooh, burns a douche. Has one in hand still. Not being against Salvani, it's probably not going to be a big deal. And since he's not necessarily in a hurry to do damage to Big Cloth here. Like an amulet is not really an issue. All right, so interesting. Guessing that was a javelin, and Clothier is daring Vincenzo to Oh no! And Clothier will see. Oh dear, he's got a rage. Which means you really can't build a board opposite him. If you put too many cards down, he will destroy. So Pachindo is seizing on the moment. I think seeing his opportunity, he's going to start whittling that health down, try to close this out in the next turn or two. Again, with Rage, Brynjolf. I mean, he, he's got... He's, this deck is, is full of, of draw, which is really uh, powerful. I say, Captain Obvious here, draw is a good thing, y'all. Heck. Go away to fight view hand. Hi, some nice down here. Dawn's Wrath. A shocker to see Tribunal running so much removal. Prepare yourself. Alrighty. Fools! Well. There you go, drawn first. Sly Marsh Blade also drawing. Ooh. 
Uh. Yep. Vincenzo just really able to dig in. I think this is probably one of the better late game decks you can have, really. If you can get to this point, there's very few decks I think you can really beat it mind. out. Obviously, yes, Telvani running altars and all those sorts of things, but, you know, here we've got the douche and other stuff that can shut that down. I really, really don't know. And Martin Septim, wow, it, that would be, all, well, my it's it's already just about over. Does, does he have enough? With, no, no. He's close. Be awesome no, to see the douche do one point of damage for the for the win. By but. the egg, a fine battle. <laughs> we'll see about this. Does he have enough? Does Clothier have the answer to save himself for one more turn? He does. It is going to do breakthrough though. It doesn't really help. All right, so he is on borrowed time. Not anymore. It's going to be a, do a double douche. A double douche. Do it, Vincenzo. No. Okay, he's going to go the he's going to go the rage way. Ah, I thought we were going to see a double douche, but that's kind of pretty too. Well done. Well done. And we have jumped in, kind of switched over. We now are with Manic Jack. And this is essentially the matchup I was just talking about. Manic Jack running Telvani. Uh, I, I would say, not, I don't want to say Once typical Telvani. Yeah. <laughs> Vincenzo said he needed to go for the flashy, the flashy play. So yeah, that's why we saw the, the Magnificent Rage instead of the double douche. But Manic Jack, I think this is the first time we've been able to witness him. But as you can see, top 10 player. At least once. Got the spiffy Nicely card back to done. prove it. But he is... It, we're going to see how it plays off. This is Kudik. Kudix, the Mad, in the tower. Ahead. Running the Ebonheart deck that I said I thought would be able to beat he, like a Telvani. I did say that, you know, with the altar You're and things, uh, it, it could be a little harder. But we know that there are nice support removals in those colors. Should've I mean, heck, I think all of them. Your Shadow Fens, your Dushniks, your Belly G's, they're, they're all there. So that altar may not stick around for too long, unfortunately for our fine fellow Manic Jack. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Now, obviously, Kudix is running a different version of Ebon Heart with Sky Shard. Nice to see that card getting some play there. It's a, some nice artwork, a little ambiguous. Can't really see what's going on there, but not bad. The mighty... Ungolum takes a swing at face. And the nice premium beheaded zombie. Wow. Just not even mess around going, hey, I want I want my uh I want my value, and he's got it. So I could be proven wrong absolutely right here. As Manic Jack just has all the value in the world. Oh no! Oh no! His thumb hit the hit the ring, and I smell blood on the wind. Ooh! Now that's not yet absolutely devastating, but as we just saw in that last game, I, and I don't know—is this a? That's a gal. It's definitely a gal. Ooh, Milamir unable to kill anything because, well. He's a little... He's, he's, he's not the self-sacrificing type. Ooh. Nice combos here. Just... This is... You are seeing a Telvani control deck do its thing. Like, what what it is... It's... it's um... yeah. Yep, got that amulet down. Amulet and altar. That's a, that's a difficult combo to deal with. Nicely done. I raise the spine of corn. And a rage. Nope. A humbler version of it. Wisely taking him out. Although I'm not sure what Manic Jack has in his Discord that would have been worthwhile. Okay, now we are seeing a bit more of the... the like, comeback mechanic or the staying power of the Eden Heart deck. My what you gonna pull there, Manic Jack? All right. More Alter Fodder. Wow! I'm not sure what the odds are of that, but 
Rather, rather spectacular. Oh wait. Yeah, no, I don't. Is, it, is he just? Right, let's, let's not. Uh, let's not interfere in the game there. Ungulum gets a kill. The mighty Ungulum. Oh, there you go. I don't think I can bring it up without the. Oh no! Make sure your pet comes back to hand. But we can do this. I'm doing this for Brave. Uh, for those who don't know, I do like to make My arrows fly true. cards. Because uh, I, I really like the art so much. I will make this a like a video. It'll have some Elder Scrolls music playing behind it. Okay. That should be enough. Got to mark that down. It's a 35 minute mark. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, sorry, Manic Jack. Uh, again, it's the first time I've spectated, so you may not know. I, I, I don't, I don't want to... Well, I'll let him know. The hiss shall be so I don't want to. I don't want to disturb the board if if I can help it. For the sake of for the sake of the viewers to be able to see exactly what's going on, y'all haven't complained, which I appreciate. There have been several games where I've I've cut. I've had to like do a do a little bit of a rough cut there. And you like there's a card now on the board that wasn't there a second ago. But y'all have been good sports about it. Haven't really, haven't really fussed at me there. I appreciate that. But I try to. I want to avoid that as much as possible. Oh, and Kudix with a Mulemir of his own says, "I hate you, Shadowfen. I hate you, Ordinary Necromancer, most assuredly." Boy, yeah, just cleaning up. So he got a lot more value out of his Mulemir than Mana Jack was able to get, obviously, just uh, because of how the board was set up. Endoral Archmage, great for cleaning out that lane. Uh, for the most part, the Leviathan would live. By the sacred words of Bella. <laughs> well, hey. And Man Jack just really working, working the synergies, working the the board in a fantastic way. It's it's always good to see that. At least for me, I'm like oh wow, you just and you know it wasn't even belabored. It wasn't like you had to ponder and think. It was you just saw him just move. This is somebody who is used to piloting a control deck, unlike somebody like myself who would be going, I don't know what to do. As has been evidenced by many comments. <laughs> There's a difference between playing controlled a control deck and winning, and playing a control deck to win. And I currently. Do not have the ladder. So Manic Jack's really only concerned at this point. Oh, Razzle Medazzle! What a great pull there. Now he's going to be able to get. Ooh, what a great card. And in premium, too. That's pretty spectacular. So Kudix really, you know, I mean, you figure you drop that with Belly G or anything else, and by golly G, uh, it is going to be a one heck of a rage. So, uh, a great card. I, you know, I run one copy of that on my dragon deck. So possibly see Black Hand get sacrificed in order to. Ooh! And we've got a buff and Kano now. That could be the death now. Choosing not to hit face. I mean, he does have lethal with what he's got there. I think that third. No, he doesn't. The waters of life. Black hand. Can only do good for two. Oh, and the giant bat. Wow. Oof. Uh... Black hand and ice storm, perhaps. Or Cruel Firebloom. Well, I mean, that both of Kudix's uh, cards have a, a pretty good stats on there. So I wonder if Manic Jack is really considering 
like trying to avoid breaking those last three runes. He's hovering over the altar. All right, that is him, not me, right? Yeah, I'm over here. It's, it's looking really good for Manic, but you know, I, I think, I think I've said many times, you heard me say the words, I punted it at the end. And I think Manic is just trying to avoid that possibility. Because he really does have all the advantage. He's got, he's got the card draw engine. He's got the health, the life. Got a nice 10-10 on the board. Does it look like he's going to... Wow, gets a Lineth. I mean, he's really up there, too. This is not just any card draw. This is... Big time card drop. And yeah, he's looking to close it out this turn, it looks like. So unless Kudix has an answer for Lineth and or Encano, he's got the magicka for it, but if he doesn't have the cards, Manic Jack is going to close it out here. Whoa! And, but Kudix has to know. Oh no, does he have rage? I mean, it wouldn't end the game, but it would certainly make things a little more interesting. I mean, he knows Manic Jack has Drive Mad. If I fall, Okay, so somehow Kudix managed to have the cards that he needed in order to thwart lethal. As long as you're here, try to be useful. Oh, very nice, very clever there. Does only manage to nab a sweet roll. Uh, we'll probably see a cruel fire bloom on the aforementioned sweet roll. Just kidding, just kidding. Again, Manage Action once again showing why he has the top 10 card back, and I do not. <laughs> oh, does get the one breakthrough and closes it out in spectacular fashion. Well done, Manic Jack. So, I had a lot of invade against a lot of invade recently. So, I'm in the mood for something fast because um, obviously that's frustrating, and some of them can go on a while, and you can still lose at the end of them. So I went for Galen's Goblin. And I'm in the mood to hit face a lot. Or at least for something quick. Okay, so it's Monk. Now is it going to be Pilfer Monk with Unrelenting Siege and um, the Pilfer Support? Or is it going to be a Git um, Forward Camp Jobby? Well, I'm known in friends groups to be a support killer, so I'm never going to be pleased to see lots of support, am I? And only I could have two five-cost cards in a cheap goblin deck with no ring at the start. I thought I said I Bright wanted to see fast. Your Still, at least I've got Shadowfen, I suppose. That's good. There isn't a lock that we can Okay, so it's Pilfer. I've got an answer for that. <laughs> Sorry, Kitty. Galafen's <laughs> always welcome, just not quite this early. <laughs> Look at that, that's so cute. Sanctuary pet. But it's not the alternative art one, so at least <laughs> I don't feel quite so bad about killing it. Poor little pet. Bye bye pet. Well, he's not going to live long, is he? He's got to die. I think I'll set that up. I'm going to put Scourge... Actually, I'll put him in the field lane and then that way it threatens a trade. Even though what I'm really looking to do is to leaf level. So 
Sai, you're way too early. It's very naughty of you. I know you've got a nice big sword to wave around, but that's just not on, is it, being here this early? Now, don't kill my goblin. Don't you dare kill my goblin. Yippee! That's gonna die. Although, I think I can afford to let it stay there for a bit. May the fates smile on Khajiit. More important to kill him. Can't have him getting help. Typical. Well, he's not going to be long for this world, is he? Don't you dare kill my goblin. Don't you dare. Hit face. Come on, you know you want to. Hit face. Come on. The haunt is all. Good. Oh, another leaf lurker. Even better. Like this, whack him a bit. The forest is my cloak. Bye. And I'm not going to hit face anymore, otherwise that gives them options. He's still got too many cards in my leg. If I fall, they okay, that's not a problem, is it? Too easy. Aw, that kitty is so pretty. Nice ginger tom. Pity I've got to kill it. Okay, oh, there's my dragon. Ship point, he's always turning up early. I'm surprised he's this late, actually. Where have you been, mate? Get the goblin out there ready to in the hope get the buffing goblin. Looking promising. Okay, he's gonna go. What do you want to bet? They've got two cards there. And the one's going to be Swift Strike. <laughs> okay, thank you, witch. Thank you, Scourge. Oh, I think I'll just wait. <laughs> it's quite funny, isn't it? Goblin's not hitting face. This one is very resourceful. Okay, I think it's time for Sai, isn't it? I don't really want to get rid of anything, so I think I'll keep Chef in hand. Go on, Sai, do your thing. Kill the kitty. Let's have a nice leaf lurker next round. I, I bet that one card is a bit strike. It, it always is, isn't it? When they've got that card. Yeah, I think I'll wait. You underestimate. You underestimate. Hello, Cliff Racer. Okay, he's got to die. I can't have them draining anymore. Ah, oh, thank you, witch. <laughs> I'm afraid there. Do you mock take you? Letter. The forest is my cloak. Now I know I should have put Chef out earlier as a misplay, but it's not gonna happen yet. It's looking pretty good. This one will protect us on the roads. Okay. I think we go for it. Let's get my calculator out.
Yeah, we go for it. You've angered me. That is a fatal mistake. Do you mark take you? Uh oh. They're gonna kill Matt Quarter. Actually they probably can't because of the curse. Time for the race to finish. The classic. This one thanks you. And we are rejoining Manic Jack for what's probably going to be the last game of the day. I know I'm going to be able to incorporate some of Carryout Braves games into this video. And I'm trying to keep that level, the, the length, down a little bit. It has been come to my attention. I mean, you get these feature length, two, two and a half hour videos. It's like, all right, that, that's a little bit, little bit, little bit much. So I'm trying to trying to scale it back and keep these down to between 45 minutes to an hour, and I mean it this time. And he checks the greeting and sends Shadowmare in with his glowing red eyes. That's nightmare fuel for children for sure. I mean, it's really hard, kind of, to make horses look scary. The only other one, if you ever look up the Denver, Colorado libra uh, library airport. There is a big blue horse with glowing freaking yeah. eyes. Scary as heck. Really got to wonder what the heck the people were thinking. Like, this is supposed to be a, hey, welcome to, well, it's facing you if you're coming in. So it's it's more of, it's greeting the people who live there. But it's still freaky. It's still freaky. And I think, I think the man who sculpted it actually passed away shortly after crafting the demon ah, steed. That actually might be its real name. Ah. Really sure. Anywho. I do not fear death. Manic Jack changing it up a little bit, as we saw just from the last game. He expertly navigated a, a killer Telvani list, and now he is running Assassin, which is Telvani minus Endurance. So a little bit more of a sprint. It's, it's Telvani with sprinting, not Telvani Marathon. And not Telvani at all. I'm going to stop talking now. Up against Hempstead, a fellow warrior, no doubt looking to crack rank four and no perhaps having a really bad it. go of it. Oh, I just noticed Manic Jack actually currently right now in the warrior. I'm sure he will not be there long. That's the thing. Once you once you've hit rank, uh, you know you come in in the top ten. I don't think it's ever a question of of getting. Even with 15 days left, I mean, you could probably do it in two or three, depending on how much plays. Goes for a lot of folks. So Hempstead really just kind of uh, getting a little more, a little more reserved. We've seen two fighters guilds come down. Fighter guild recruits, sorry, not the entire guild, just one member of it. And really just kind of, uh, you know, thinking it through. I serve the Emperor with my hey! Je is it Jeffy? It can't be Jeffy, right? Joffrey. Okay. Not not a good time if you're playing him by himself. His whole his whole shtick is that he makes the characters that are already there cloak. more invincible. Or invincible. Oh. Essentially, it gives his life to them. But he goes down very unceremoniously. Hemp said, okay, awesome. finally breaks the room. Razzmadazzm, ra Razzm, he's got to be in, he's going to be in. The, I know I've used him before, but I'm going to put him in the thumbnail because he has just been Super ubiquitous. Work. Like every deck in the world is playing Razzmadazzm. Even somehow cards are decks that don't run those colors. Manic Jack just, we, so we saw him before, taking it easy, really biding his time with that Telvani list. And now we're just seeing him really... Uh, living up to the name of Assassin and just really going for the jugular here for, for Hempstead, who hasn't really been able to keep anything uh, uh, any, anything on the board, really. Razum had a, a brief moment of glory and then he was unceremoniously dealt with. 
Manic Jack with Together, eight, nine. Okay, so Hempstead, this was, this is, and I can't say I for sure, because you never know, like but it looks like a, <laughs> a, um, a monk, a pilfer monk deck that did not draw the right end or the right half of itself. So he does have, he can do three more with the House Kinsman and Soul Split. I'm feeling lucky. Okay. And hey, that's an apropos of time. He, okay, what did he get? What did he get? Oh, well. Yeah, that was about as unlucky as you. Well, no, you could get unlucky. I mean, it could have been a sweet roll. It could have been something with two attack. I see their strategy. So interesting, we do see Wisp Mother here, so there, there were some shenanigans that Manic might have been able to deploy had he drawn the right combo, but right now he just has a massive board. And unless Hempstead is running Immolating Blast, he is more than likely done for here, and we will see a very, very authoritative and swift strike from Manic Jack. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're, th this is, like I said, it's, you know, we, we, we saw, I don't know, two or three games in a row where Pilfer Monk just was max performance, just did amazing work. Interesting. I mean, I can't, can't hit one more than once, so. That poor opportune is like, ha I'm on the ball. Okay, what am I doing here? Why, there's guards. Why'd you play me? Why am I here? Well done, Manic Jack. And I think that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. Like I said, I'm really trying to stick down to the to the uh, to the shorter shorter videos. And by shorter, I mean like I said, 45 minutes to an hour, hour and 15, depending. Uh, today was a little off because, as I said, I tried to get into a bunch of games, and I just kept coming up, you know, with one or two turns left. And while I don't mind coming at the tail end of a game, since so you can see either a nice comeback or see you know some awesome spectacular finale. Uh, when you come back with only one turn left, you really can't do it. And I just kept getting bounced around back and forth just with games that were already over or somebody was conceding. I actually queued into a game that was 30 to 30 right at the very beginning and the opponent conceded for some reason and uh, didn't get to see that game. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you all for playing. And until next time, I already said the word playing. Now it's awkward. Well, keep playing. <laughs>